Hi, everyone. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you for that introduction. Thank you for that incredible performance. I enjoyed looking at all the photos of your fabulous adventures up there in beautiful white quiver <laughs> junction and seeing your um, beautiful dogs and the joy that um, I remember from my time there. Congratulations to you, Center for Cartoon Studies, class of 2020, I say this again, you have faced so many obstacles, floods, fires, pandemics, delays, you have waited far too long for this moment, but now it's official, I'm here, I've made a new dress for you for this moment. You are, from this moment and forever shall be, masters in cartooning. Here's where I was gonna make some emanata uh, shaped confetti and throw it, but I ran out of time doing my dress. <laughs> Whew. What does it all mean? And what on earth do you do now? <laughs> well, perhaps I can give some advice as I myself am a mistrix of cartooning. Yes, this is something I am extremely proud of. And I think you all know why. This was <clears throat> a lot of work, like a lot. Speaking of which, I do want to say hi to some of your incredibly brilliant and demanding teachers who I hope are watching. Hi, Michelle, James, Jason, Luke, so many more. I love you and miss you all. I didn't get to study under all the brilliant teachers you now have, but every person I encountered during my time at CCS from students to strangers I met in the bar under Hotel Coolidge changed my life. In fact, I'm still sleeping with the gentleman from that bar, my partner Johnny, who's right here. <laughs> but I really mean it when I say the lessons I learned at the Center for, Car for Cartoon Studies continue to inspire me, sometimes in very surprising ways. In fact, I thought about Jason Lutz's narrative structure theories this week when I was working on an upcoming nightgowns drag show, and we need to figure out where in the show to put the perfectly timed alien invasion. I think of Alec Longstreth and John Chad every time I hand letter something, usually terribly, and I definitely heard Criota, Bill, and Steve Bissett yelling at me about the anatomy of this hand in particular on my dress. But let's face it, you are only so strict and serious with us about doing our best work because you believe we can do it. And I want to echo what Lisa said, the most important thing that you taught us was that you believed in us and that we should believe in ourselves. I've since come to call it feeling your own fantasy, and it is in fact a vital part of life. CCS is a rare kind of art program that embodies that, that makes each student, even those of us who came in as self-proclaimed non-artists or stating, I absolutely cannot draw, feel, feel like we, you made us feel like we actually have something worthwhile to contribute, something important, like you said. And I've often found that it's that kind of fantasy, believing or even insisting that you can do it, that actually makes things happen. From the moment I packed my bags for New York City and moved out of my room in the Hotel Coolidge, degree in hand, I had to start hustling. Not literal sex work as it turns out, but at times delightfully adjacent. I got my first job scanning member IDs at Crunch Gym during the night shift. I picked up a second morning job teaching English as a second language to Japanese bankers. And then a third afternoon job Finally, uh, something related to comics, laying out children's comic books for Toon Books in Francoise Mouly and Art Spiegelman's living room. I realized that in order to live a life of New York glamour, I would have to take all the jobs, the rough, the rough ones along with the dream ones. And let me tell you, that continues to be the case. I got used to doing everything all at the same time. I asked to exhibit gallery shows pretty much anywhere I saw a blank wall and found an agreeable manager in the office building where I taught ESL in the dark basement of my favorite Brooklyn bar. Turns out actually anything can be a gallery, but um, that's still all of my resume. <laughs> I found a fourth job as a live model for drink and draws around the city, mainly because I wanted to meet some other artists. And I was doing those in full drag with gigs everywhere, 
from the Bronx Art Museum to the Eagle Leather Bar. And I was known for being able to hold an action pose in six inch heels for 10 minutes because you really want them to get the like. Afterwards, I would lip sync a little for tip money. And I discovered if I got on stage and scared people a little, they were more compelled to buy my comics and prints afterwards. You gotta give the people what they want. Uh, at the same time, it wasn't an easy or straightforward time in my life. And we do have to be prepared for all the uncertainty that life gives us. Sometimes even maintaining relationships or regular employment has been challenging, but a sense of fantasy can be a remarkably practical fallback plan. Just a few years after graduating, my mom passed away from a cancer that destroyed her body in front of my eyes. And up until that moment, I had never put personal stories from my life into my comics or my drag, but I found myself wanting, maybe needing to process through art. And in drag, I put on my mom's 80s power suits and I lip sync to songs she specifically told me she thought were too sappy <laughs> in telling personal stories like that. I, I feel like I unlocked some, some new strengths and new abilities, new creativity within myself. I told myself I could do it using that confidence, that encouragement that so many loved ones and community members like you helped build up in me. And I put myself out into the world as the queer superhero I had been drawing <laughs> in comics from the very beginning. I am Sasha Velour, I declared optimistically, and perhaps to this day, I continue to try to make that <laughs> more and more true. Throughout this chaotic journey, I wanna let you know that I keep returning to the lessons I learned in cartoon school. Those specific lessons have proved useful in so many aspects of life, not just comics. And if you'll allow me, I'm gonna enumerate perhaps the five key ones. Number one, take every project one step at a time, usually hunched over a table, sometimes with no end in sight. <laughs> Having big dreams is easy. The hard part is developing a big process, as I like to call it, to actually make things happen. And you all have the incredible tools for that. You, you can't do it all at once. You have to sketch out a plan and start somewhere. Uh, when, when Johnny and I started dreaming of a drag art magazine, we took ourselves out for coffee and wrote a list of just the first five articles and collaborators we could realistically put together in one month. We called it Vin Magazine. We launched a Kickstarter. We split up the tasks, kept track of the deadlines, emailed the artist, played with the layout, made promo videos, handed postcards and made temporary tattoos to give out joyously losing sleep, making sure to bring our idea to fruition carefully. It was some classic CCS zine making training put to good use. And when the success of that issue actually helped me get a hosting gig, a show at a bar, uh, I just applied the same logic to running a show. And I know you all know the connections between comics and performance. You got to same thing, make a list of the cast, communicate clearly with them, make a great poster, plan the lineup, write some remarks, create your own numbers, it gets more complicated, add some feathers and sequins to a vintage dress, hairspray your wig, make a playlist, fix the lights, stop the weird buzzing noise on the speakers, uh, clean up the beer, is that a rat? You know, all the normal New York bar things. Number two, rule number two, lesson number two, Great design enhances everything. Human beings are inherently superficial creatures and we are largely convinced by appearances. This is one of the messages of drag, which is why we always have to make it gorgeous. The, I don't wanna say prettier, but more intentional and specific, my makeup and appearance and costumes and advertising has become the more attention I notice I'm able to command. When you have a message and a story, that you passionately wanna share, you have to use every tool at your disposal. So if you've got it, flaunt it. And if you don't, carve it out of foam and paint it on. <laughs> Number three, you should learn how to do every part of the process. You don't need to be great at everything, but you should understand the elements. This one has really haunted me. I always 
want to learn how to do everything completely independently. This totally goes back to CCS and when we would, you know, make the screen prints and do it ourselves. If I now to this day want to make a movie, I need to know how to operate the camera, import the files, edit them, adjust the color and the sound, export it, upload, etc. I will, I will do it. If I'm getting into fashion, I'm going to learn to sew, to model, to produce the patterns, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I, I want to understand every aspect and there's great joy in the process. But of course, just because you know how doesn't mean that you should do everything yourself. That's the follow-up lesson. The community that you already have, you know what kind of great joy can come from working together with someone else. You have to realize where your own strengths lie and where others can bring strengths as well. The more you understand the entire process and how each step is done, even if you're not so great at doing it yourself, the better of a leader and a collaborator you can be. Number four, the lesson I learned from, uh, from CCS is that everything that seems new is actually old and has been probably uh, done better before. <laughs> this is my pessim pessimistic wording, so forgive me. Fundamentally, I mean it as a positive thing because it, it takes you off the hook. Learn where things come from, practice your own craft constantly, and eventually I feel like you, we somehow find a way to give things a, a unique twist after all. Sometimes there's even more inspiration to be found in the past and in the way things have traveled throughout time than there is in just looking at your contemporaries and what they're doing. Do things differently. There's enough of following the trend. Change shit up. Number five, this one is really important to me. It took me a while to realize this is actually one of the lessons I did learn at school is that making bad work is inevitable and not so bad after all. First of all, everything is terrible to someone. <laughs> bad is mostly subjective. Second of all, plenty of bad art is still effective and influential. Third of all, you should think some of your work is bad or else you are delusional. <laughs> a little, and a little delusion is important. I have to channel a delusional side uh, sometimes to push through fear and self-doubt. You can judge it later, I tell myself, but by then it'll be too late. At that point, all you can do is try to make it work and move on to the next thing and try to do better that time. At CCS, we had so many assignments, but some of the work I turned in was just terrible. And I survived and it got better. Accept and embrace it. Make no mistake though, even though I, I learned those lessons and I've held them so close to me, not everything can be learned in the classroom. In fact, I want to add my own list of vital lessons from uh, Sasha Velour's lessons for the modern fluid human. Of course, once I wrote them out, I worried they sound like such irritating cliches. I understand why they're saved for self-help podcasts and girl boss seminars, but to me, they still ring true. So have at them and <laughs> maybe they'll mean something. Number one is you have to take big risks. Think you might gain something by going on a reality TV competition and giving it your all? Go for it. Live life with no regrets or could have been. Don't you dare judge or envy people who give things their all. Be one of them. Number two, your best work feels easy to do, even if it ends up taking up all your time. I've found you have to stay attuned to what to what feels natural. Life just gets more complicated as you go, so you, you do have to continuously find ways to simplify. You do have to say no to certain projects and opportunities. Be clear and friendly with people and just focus on what instinctually and logically makes sense. Number three lesson, stay open to different paths. Don't prejudge. Being too rigid is a mistake, especially because life is so unpredictable and other people are joyfully unpredictable. Everything needs a certain level of fluidity, I found, especially your expectations of yourself. It's a good thing, though. You can be open and listen and try things differently. And then this one's a hard one. Acknowledge your own privileges and focus first on what you can do differently. I found time and time again that the more you do for others, the more you have. 
and the better you feel. Each one of you already has enormous power already to accomplish things and to collaborate with others in your immediate community to create success, collective success. So ask yourselves, what responsibility can you take even right now? My first drag production was that fundraiser at the Main Street Museum. We launched it the week after I handed my thesis project on the Stonewall Riots. We raised $3,000 for trans incarcerated youth and recouped all our expenses. For a while, I followed that model, but there's always room for improvement and critique, and that's kind of what keeps life interesting. So this summer, my drag troupe nightgowns, who I've been working with for three years, um, we're going to try something totally different. We're going to premiere our first musical, which is also the first time um, that we're going to be able to release something that's fully accessible to the deaf and will be super titled in several different languages. And in addition to the fundraiser, we're, we're also doing a profit share model with cast and crew working as equals. There's always room to do things differently, and it's exciting to, to open new doors like that. Finally, drink water stretch, eat, breathe, sleep. I really find it annoying when people tell me to do these things, but life is filled with uncertainty and you need to be grounded in your body and taking care of yourself. A few years ago, I was asked to, to film a video describing my morning routine for a high-end uh, fashion publications YouTube channel. And at the time, I wasn't ready to share my real morning routine in the world, which was like waking up shivering in a pool of sweat from stress strains and pulling myself together over a coffee and a big joint to the sound of disco music. But so I researched what a real celebrity ladies did in the morning to find something more aspirational. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez drinks water mindfully while looking at the clouds outside her window. So it is will be Goldberg, who apparently doesn't sleep much at all, but rests in bed with headphones on. They also both walk and stretch, practice gratitude, and spend time communing with their pets. So I started doing these things as well. It's easy. It didn't cure my stress dreams or night sweats. I needed medicine to do that, but it definitely brought some improvement. And now here I am, practically a, a famous lady myself, giving unasked for advice, a, a thriving, successful artist. When I, when I came to CCS, I was one of those people saying, I can't draw. Today, as a non-binary director and performer who won a reality TV competition for drag queens, holds a master's degree in cartooning and still mostly makes a living selling t-shirts, I know I am bad at drawing, but I still think I'm everything an artist is supposed to be and more. And I think each and every one of you is too. Now my loves, go out and make things. Whatever you do, make things that move and excite people. Make things that excite you. Tell truths that go beyond language and cliches that connect people through experiences. Use your fantasy and your fantasy in yourself to expand what is possible and imaginable in the world and in your own life and speak out boldly for equity and justice as you already are doing so bravely. I am very excited to see what each and every one of you puts out into the world. I know we're just meeting over Zoom, but I love and believe in each and every one of you. Consider me a resource. Use me and on with the show. I love you so much. Congratulations. Yeah.